Hello, everybody. My name is Lisa Lamont, and I am your host of Ladies Get Your Prance On. And you are in for a treat today because this incredible woman, I, I'm, I just want to cry. I met you, Kat, it was like, was it two years, almost two years ago yeah. at this It's Your Turn event. And I wanted to meet Kat so much because I have the group Prancing Kittens. <laughs> and, and I'm like going, I get to meet the real Kat. I mean, you are the real, the real deal. And so Kat Williford, she is, I'm telling you, when you hear about coach, transformational coach, you have, how long have you been a transformational coach? Uh, since 1994, so that would be 23 years. So you were a coach, I know. So you were a coach before people were even even used that title. And I just wanted people to know that you really know your stuff and you're the real deal. What is one little fact, though, that people may not know about you that think they know you? Mm. Is there any, any story or anything interesting that you'd like to share? Let's see. Um, <laughs> I play the bugle. <laughs> I did not know that. I play the bugle. I played the bugle in high school for an all girls drum and bugle corps. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That is so cool. So I did know that. And, and here's what you don't know about me. I used to play a seven piece Tama drum set. And I, I used to play and jam with a heavy metal band back in the eighties. So that is a look at, so we've learned, we've learned something new about each other. I love it. You, you recently wrote a blog and so I was wondering if maybe you could talk on that topic because a lot of the viewers are, they're mostly women, men are welcome to, we love them, but you posted a blog and if you wouldn't mind starting off to share what inspired you to write the blog and what it's about. Mm, absolutely. Um, so the blog is called The Power in the Middle. And what I discovered, um, I guess around the time that I hit that thing called perimenopause, <laughs> um, I discovered that uh, not only was my body changing, but my, um, my ability to actually see out and see things was shifting. Yeah. Um, and I tend to work with women who are close to wherever it is I am in life. So like when I started coaching in my twenties, I was coaching women in their twenties and thirties. Um, and now I'm coaching, you know, we're in midlife. We're in this luscious, juicy thing called midlife. And so what inspired it really was all these conversations that I have been having with people. Um, I work predominantly with women, women clients, and most of the women I work with are hitting the same thing and they're feeling a little invisible. Yeah. And I, you know, part of what I say in the blog is like, it's all of a sudden like somebody threw over all of us, Harry Potter's invisibility cloak and we can see each other and we can see out, but it feels like people don't really see who we are. You know, it's not like we've become yeah. completely invisible. You know, people don't bump into us yeah. <laughs> accidentally. Yeah. You know, we are like our tangible skin is still here. Yes. But what they aren't seeing is our amazingness. And so that's what I was writing about. It, it, was, it just inspired this uh, a conversation I had just with myself and somebody else just really inspired me to really look at this more deeply. And I think you remember this, Lisa, my, my expertise is really in archetypes. So the archetypal energies of the ancient goddesses, archetypal energies of anything really like it's story. You know, I come from the world of theater. It's a, it's archetypal, it's story, it's yes. myth. And so the archetypes that I were that I'm seeing here is we're actually missing an archetype, and I I'm developing uh, out actually what this archetype really is for we middle aged women, and it's just such a a freedom to know it's okay to be in the middle. And you also when I met you you talk about goddesses and. And to think, and I, and I remember I started crying. I didn't want to start crying now because I get all, I see you. I'm, I'm, I'm teary right now. So, <laughs> you know, just the idea that we can think of ourselves, no matter what our age, no matter what our circumstances, that we are indeed goddesses. And when you said that, I just said, I don't deserve to be a goddess. Like, you know, I don't qualify. I, I've done things in my past. I, I, you know, it's just like, I do not qualify to even get close to a goddess. I'm like, I'm, I felt like I'm a sub, sub, sub 
pretend goddess. And when you say invisible, I, I you know, that's what that's what it brings up for me is that we don't feel like we deserve to be seen, that we deserve to be visible. And so it, it, they both tie hand in hand. They absolutely tie hand in hand. And when you think about, um, particularly with our youth obsessed culture, yeah, and discarding of elderly wisdom, mm -hmm. uh, it's a perfect storm, really, to start ignoring a woman right at the time yeah. she hits her stride. Yes. I don't know about you, Lisa, but when I look at my friends, when I look at my clients, 40s, 50s, 60s, early 70s, they are hitting their stride. They are accomplished. Yes. They are uh, all of a sudden securing themselves in new ways, although new insecurities roll in yes. at this middle age when our body changes through menopause. Yes. Um, you know, we're, we're in this place where we have learned to navigate. Mm -hmm. Now, those, those learnings have sometimes come at a cost. You know, when I work with women who are in corporate America, you know, there's a lot of swallowing that they have to do on a daily basis. Of being, there. You know, I swallowed a lot. You swallow your femininity. Yep. You swallow your emotions. You swallow the fact that you said something and then the guy next to you took credit for it. Oh. Yes. You swallow and you swallow and you swallow and all of a sudden you wonder why your ass is as big as the bench you're sitting on. Well, it's because you swallowed all this pain. You've swallowed all this stuff. And um, that, you know, is where I found myself. But I, I had swallowed a bunch of stuff in my personal relationship, yeah. my love relationship, until I couldn't swallow anymore because I was gagging. I literally walked around with a sore throat for two years. Yeah. So like our body just manifests these things. So there's a lot of stuff we take on as women that I want to have us stop taking on and to actually remove the masks. So, so what this does is it has us put up masks yep. and we start wearing the mask up. Yep. My favorite one to get rid of is the chief operating officer of control because when she's in, you know, run amok, I yep. am miserable. And so is everybody else. Yep. Yep. Um, and then there's the smarty pants who's always going to be the smartest one in the room, get the last word, this, that, and the other thing. That's not a nice mask to wear. No. But the one I was wearing in my personal relationship was suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> it was, I was like, suck it up, buttercup, suck it up. It's going to be your turn. It's going to be your turn. Yeah. And my turn, I realized, was not going to come unless I took the stand for it. So, you know, I, I think that's one of the reasons so many of us resonated to that event where you and I met, it's your turn. So many of us have decided it is my turn. I've raised yeah. the kids. I've, I've swallowed all that stuff at work. I've swallowed yeah. the stuff in my relationships. It is my turn. And so what I was noticing and what, uh, there's a new mask that is developed that I'm seeing out there. And it is, it's the mask of middle-aged invisibility and we have started to wear it because we feel like nobody wants to hear from us they want to hear from the youth they want to they don't want to hear from someone with wisdom so that's a lot to say that you know a lot of it is we don't we feel we don't deserve it but there's a lot of reasons that have built into that self-esteem yes whole yes um, and yet and yet at our core, at your core, at everyone who's listening to this, your core is your inner goddess. That inner light, your inner goddess. Yes, yes. She is powerful. She is you. She's not anything other than you at your best. Yes. What do you say to, to the women that are watching that feel shame? You know, Brene Brown came out, you know, a couple years ago. And, and she just, you know, she took YouTube or the TED talk and went on fire with that. Can you talk about the, the shame a little bit with, do you have that show up with your clients and, and what that feels like for them? All the time. You know, I mean, guilt and shame are sisters. Yep. Hand in hand. Hand in hand. They walk hand in hand. One creates the other, the other creates this. 
And it becomes one of those really spiraling, downward spiraling things when they show up in our lives. Um, and oh my gosh, yes, the shame. I mean, I, I just, it, it comes from now, but it comes from when we were small, you know, the shame of, you know, I was different. I was a creative artist. I was just a little different than everybody. You know, I, I tried to, I did whatever I could to fit yes. in yes. and be in my circle of friends that I'd grown up with. But, you know, honestly, we're all a little weird, but, you know, <laughs> like there was, there was like, there was this shame that I felt for being an artist. And then there was the shame of not looking as skinny as the, the, the tiny little petite things that yes. were, the popular ones. I'm sorry, I was five seven by the time I was in sixth, seventh grade. I was, uh, you know, I grew up fast. So, but I, and then I had shame about my breasts because I got breasts before everybody else. Yeah. And then they got made fun of, and then yeah, so those 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 things that happened to us early in life continue to show up just with new players around us. Mm -hmm. I, I love that you're so open to share this, Kat, because the, the people that are watching you, they, they perception, right? Perception is this huge thing. And, and so even when I saw and I met you and you're up on stage and we're prancing to, you know, to Taylor Swift, shake it off, you know, it wasn't until you, you were talking and I would love for you to share because it's important to know that the perception of, of Kat has everything together and she has nothing to worry about. What has she had to overcome? And you shared yeah. the most powerful story about what happened to you when you were younger. Are you okay with sharing that today? Absolutely. Yeah. I think you know, it's important I, for people to know that, that we've all walked on paths and we've had our struggles. Yeah. You know, um, when I was, uh, 17. Yeah, 17. Uh, so senior year of high school, January 29th. <laughs> I still remember the date. <laughs> um, I was in a car train accident. And I'm one of the like lucky people that gets to say that because many people who are in a car that hits a train are no longer here. Um, and that's the, I'm, I'm going to come back to that, but I want to leap forward to that moment when you met me, what had just happened yeah. was, um, in my little local community, I started getting phone calls from people right before we went to it's your turn saying, Oh my God, are you okay? I'm like, what do you mean? Am I okay? I'm sitting on my couch. Of course I'm okay. What? What? Well, there was a train accident and Kat was involved. I was like, what? What? <laughs> and I, what? No, I'm here. I what? So you know, then I flip on the news and find out that there was a car train accident about ten miles from where I live, and um, a woman was injured, and her name was Cat, and that was on the news. That I, I still I, I I've heard this before, and I still have goosebumps all over my body. I know, and so. Um, what happened was my body started to crumble that day. Like systematically, I felt every vertebra in my spine just sort of like cross and scissor and go apart. And it lodged particularly my neck because the neck was one of, um, a, one of the great injuries of that accident. My head, went, I, I went through the windshield. Um, and so my neck has, I, I'm, 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 like this one, I mean, I wake up with neck pain every morning in my life since, you know, and I'm 53 now. So um, that's a lot of years of neck pain. And, uh, you know, like the other broken bones heal just fine. The leg is fine. The knee is fine. The foot is fine. But the neck, um, but my body just caved. And within like 15 minutes, I had a massive migraine headache. And I thought, what do I need to do? And what I needed to do is I just went to bed and I sobbed and I sobbed and I sobbed. Some of the sobbing and tears that had not been cried yet over what I lost, over the time I lost, over the um, things that I couldn't, that I didn't get to do. You know, I, I had the lead in the high school play. I couldn't do it. 
So uh, anyway, <laughs> what I realized, and it's not realizing, but like re-realized in that moment was, of course, our body is always listening and it's always taking in. Mm -hmm. And I was bound and determined to continue the healing of this mentally, emotionally, physically. You know, like I said, the bones heal really quickly when you're 17. Yeah. But the, the lingering stuff that stayed in my neck because of the scissoring there that yeah. nothing's really going to do anything for. But um, anyway, long, long story that the, the biggest piece around this for me was throughout the years, Every time I heard a train whistle, it took me to my knees, took me absolutely to my knees, especially if I didn't see it coming. Yeah. And we were in a hotel that was by what, five train tracks? Yeah, that we, we, there were trains going all the time. It's like, what is the message here? What is the message here? All these trains. Yeah. And, and see, I didn't hear the trains until you pointed it out. And after that, I heard tons of trains, you know, because it, I, I've never had a situation like that. And, and where I live in Makotio, we have a train that goes by. So it's just, it's just background noise for me. Yeah. But once you pointed that out, all I heard, there was just, it was right by the, all these trains. It was amazing. And I was, I was, I was really bound to determine when I checked into that hotel and saw those train tracks and had just gone through this. I went, I said to myself, Kat, this is your opportunity. You're going to walk out of here and not fall to your knees when you hear a train whistle. Yeah. And and, and maybe the next time you're at a train track and something's going in front of you, you know, as you're in your car and it's a safe distance away, yeah. maybe, just maybe you won't feel like vomiting. Yeah. And that's happened. You know, I hear the train whistle. It still is like, not my favorite sound in the world, but right. it, I don't fall to my knees. Yes. Um, so, you know, the, the overcoming that I think we do of, of major life things. Yeah is ongoing you know just like i think any any time we've lost someone we love we grieve and then when we lose somebody else that we love it opens up that old grief as well yep. as current grief so i yes. think everything it's a spiral you know we're not at that same point where we were 20 years ago 30 years ago but if we're on that spiral and we hit that place it's an opportunity. People talk about, oh, it's a hard lesson. It's an opportunity mm -hmm. to decide yes. what you want. Yes. And I think that's what all of the um, hard knocks in my life yeah. have given me um, is the opportunity. Yeah. And, and you are such a fun, I mean, I'm switching over from train wrecks to fun. How do you tie those two in together, Lisa? How are you going to do that? But you do. It, yeah. and so and what I love about you, Kat, is that you do, you're just, I mean, even after you shared that, that story of, of what you went through and you shared the reason of being with the trainer, I mean, cause that was happening that weekend, you got up on the next segment of the music and you were up there. It was just like, I mean, it's just like, here's my story. This is what happened, but it's not going to, it's not going to control me anymore. You know, I, I still have the neck pain. I still deal with it, but it's not going to stop me from going on in life and sharing because you have a purpose. Your, your purpose has been, I mean, you were a transformational coach. Like I said, before there was even a term for that. I mean, you're, you're called to do this and you help people. And, and that's why I'm so happy that you came on the show. It's I'm so, so happy to be here with you. So people could get to know who you are then instead of just looking at this beautiful, confident, successful woman. Yes, you are. You are all those things but at the same time there's still that vulnerable side to you. And, and like the realization, yes, this last year I put on 25 pounds. Now I'm a hypnotherapist. It's one of my tools, right? It's like, and, and, and I, I was on Joey's show recently and I said, I had to get my book out, you know, on, on weight loss and self love. I had to, I'm reapplying that again and, and taking the time to love myself. I'm not going to guilt myself. I'm not going to be ashamed of what I did. It, it, it is part of life and it's every day we have a new opportunity to, to have a do-over. You know, it's so true. I mean, even with when I, I left my relationship, um, I had such shame because what was the deal breaker? Finally, he finally said no to children. And I, I realized it was late in the game for me. But if I didn't take that stand, I would be forever mad at myself. 
Yeah. However, I went through two or three years of such self annihilation in like mentally yeah. annihilating myself for having been a suck it up buttercup mask mask wearer, you know, yeah. that I allowed something so precious like my fertility to just slide away with the years. And um, so, so I, I blamed myself, I shamed myself, I kicked my own ass 16 ways to Sunday about that. And I remember start, like the harangue, the mental harangue started again one night and I went, wait, stop. You don't get to do this. You don't get to do this to yourself because it's not going to change one thing. And when you ask about shame, like a lot of my clients, we carry a shame about something we can't do anything about at this yeah. point. So that is self-loathing. Yes. And my mission is self-love. I want every, every one of us mm -hmm. to experience self-love. Yes. Now, is it going to happen every moment of every day? Oh, gosh, no. Yes. <laughs> but remembering who we really are, like, like the inner goddess, yes. the divine spark, the, the carrier of love, if you choose to be, that's hot. It is. It is. That's hot. That other stuff? Not, no. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's not cool. So for, there's a lot of women entrepreneurs in the group prancing kittens, which is where I started my whole radio show and, and over to the video show. There's a lot of them that are entrepreneurs are, who is your ideal client that, that you love to work with that just, you know, who do you find that, that fits the best with you and, and are they entrepreneurs or are they just, are they just a woman who's just like lost and doesn't even know? Maybe she's just recently retired, but feels she needs to have more. Who, who is it that, that sings to your heart? Yeah. So really it's any woman who is, who knows and is ready to do some deep work um, that the changes she wants in her life are up to her. And I love helping women dig into themselves for their inner brilliance, beauty, intelligence, wit, courage, confidence. Um, so I work with a lot of women who are in corporate America who are recently um, promoted or about to be promoted and are wondering, can I do it? Ah! And then... Do I really want to do it? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Supporting them, uh, working with entrepreneurs who are looking at, all right, I'm here. I got here. This is where I want to be. And I can't keep doing the same stuff. So I need to elevate me in order to elevate my business. Mm -hmm. So I love working with people who know it's an inner game that's going to shift yeah. their outer game. Yeah. And then I work with people who are, they're, you know, they don't have to work right now for whatever reason, whether they're, you know, they're partnered with somebody, they're retired, whatever it is, to really look at what is next? What is this yeah. next evolution of me yeah. that will make my heart sing, that will bring me joy and be a contribution? You know, there, there, there can't. And, and when people first retire, and, and I hear this a lot, they, they retire. So that first year, maybe two years, they're just off and they're happy and they can just do whatever they want. But then after a while, it's just like, is this what, okay, so I, I really don't need the money. And my husband doesn't like to travel or he doesn't want to travel or I don't have a husband and I'm single you know, there's got to be something more. And, and for somebody just to, to work with you and find what is it that makes you happy? And like you said, 
where's your goddess at? If, if you look in the mirror and you don't see your goddess, you know, because I talk about mirror love, yes. and it's just like if you're not seeing that goddess, they need to, they need to talk to you because you will help them. And so I wanted people to know that they're not limited by having to be an entrepreneur. They're not limited if they're not working in corporate America. I mean, everybody can can learn from working with you. And the, and the fact that you're sharing, that you don't say, hey, I am perfect, life has come to me, I've got this formula, if you do X, Y, and Z, you can be successful like me. Because a, there are a lot of those six-figure people out there that are that are offering this this false solution you know it's going to take hard work and i love that you said that you know if you're willing to do the work if you're willing to be open and dig down and do the work i will help you find your beautiful goddess that's looking back at you in the mirror absolutely you know the the core of it is love it you is it, it the core of everything i do is love i you know i have a uh, a former client, she wrote me uh, a letter at the end of our engagement and she said, thank you for loving me back to life. <gasps> I love that. And I wrote her back. I said, I loved you until you could love you. <sighs> See? Oh. And that to me is what it's about because at that point, then when we're sitting in ourself a lot, when we're accessing that, and again, it's not do I feel it every day, all day long, every year? Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I remember how to get back. Yes. And you yeah. can get back quicker now. You don't, exactly. you don't have to stay that. Yeah. And the more support around you you have, whether it's coaches or, you know, your circle of friends that remind you of who you really are, yes. you know, but once a woman gets into her love and loving herself and treating herself like she matters, mm -hmm. she then knows that her gifts her passions, her contributions, the conversations she's wanting to have out in the world will make a difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It has just been so wonderful having you on my show, but how can, how can people find you? What is the, what is the best um, avenue for them to connect with you, Kat? Reach out to me on Facebook. It's just Kat Williford. Um, reach out to me on my website. Email me cat at catwilliford.com. I, you know, I love to hear from anybody and everybody who wants to have a conversation about these things of the heart and particularly women who are in the middle, you know, God love us. Just, you know, I want to just hug us all, right? I mean, we'll do, we'll do, we'll do a big group hug and, and I will um, attach to this show. I'll attach all the information mm -hmm. so that you'll be able to, to find, is there any final parting thoughts, any messages you'd like to share before we end the show? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, I love that you read my blog and appreciated it, Lisa. I've gotten a lot of great feedback on that one. And I have a series of about 12 blogs that are going to be coming out in the next, over the course of the next month. And it's an important conversation I think we keep in the forefront of our minds. So I'm going to be walking people through how to remove, or we're going to be talking about the different masks, the archetypal masks that we all wear, how to remove it what the flavor of yours is and keeping in mind this invisibility mask that we in the middle um, are under at times and how to get out from underneath it and uh, just some of my experiences there again i'm i'm very real i'm going to tell you what where i was a couple of years ago under that invisibility cloak yeah. so i would love you to join that conversation um on my, on my blog because i think it's an important one for all of us to be having Absolutely. And, and I will add that link also to that too. So thank you, love. to everybody, I'm, thank you so much for joining Kat and I today and we will be back next week. And so have a wonderful week, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.